Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Moss Pawn and Gun. I've got a very special guest at the farm with me here today. This is Tim from Military Arms Channel. Hey guys. You guys have probably seen him all over the interwebs just like me. Uh, he came all the way from the great frozen north in Indiana to come film with us all the way down here in Georgia. To melt. To melt, yeah, to thaw out. <laughs> yep. uh, but we're going to be talking about 300 blackout a little bit. Um, doing some really interesting testing today with a wide variety of different things we've set up. It's a very simple conversion, just involves a barrel swap. Very easy to do, very economical to get into. Uh, the way we're structuring this is a little different than you're used to seeing. All right, we're going to have half this video on my channel. Half of it's going to be on Tim's channel. So make sure you check out Military Arms channel. Go subscribe. Make sure you follow up because the other half of the video has got some awesome stuff in it too. We're going to get after it. This is going to be an awesome day. Uh, let's start pulling some triggers. Outstanding. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Tim. So what we've done is we've set up kind of a, a faux living room. All right, we've got a wall built to code. We've got a chair here. We've got, you know, what could be maybe a table. We've got a door over here. And what we want to kind of show is 300 blackout in defensive scenarios. Uh, in the video that you and I did together uh, for your channel, we were talking about hunting scenarios, but this is really more about defensive situations. So what's your take on carbines for defense? You know, carbines are, are popular for home defense. I don't think they're a bad choice. Uh, it certainly gives you more options than just a straight up handgun. But as we were discussing earlier, you know, you own every single bullet that you fire. So what we've done here is set up a little tiny laboratory that maybe represents the average American home. And we're gonna send some bullets through this wall, chair, table, door, to see what the bullet does. Because if you should miss the bad guy, what's that bullet gonna do? Is it gonna go outside a wall and hit the neighbor's house? Do you have children in your home? Yep. Something like that. So that's kind of what we're looking to, to discuss and maybe figure out what happens with these bullets. Well, we're gonna be testing out a couple of different loads. We'll explain as we go along. But remember, every bullet you fire has a lawyer attached to it and you own it. You're responsible every, you know, when you squeeze the trigger on any firearm, when that bullet leaves the muzzle, you own it until it stops. So, you know, that's one thing we have to consider and what we want to learn here. So, uh, you'll, you'll shoot first. Okay. Let's try out a couple of different loads. I think you're going to be real excited to see guys, uh, these awesome Lehigh defense rounds we have to work with. Uh, we've done some work with their ammo before, um, and handguns and a couple of other things. This is the first time we've done a very, uh, you know, strenuous test of 300 blackout. Let's get to it. Yeah, this should be fun. All right. Okay, guys, so the first round we're going to shoot this afternoon is a round that both Eric and I are really curious to see the results of. It's a 78 grain Lehigh Defense close quarters round. It's doing 2,600 feet per second out of this 9 inch barreled SBR. I do have an AAC SDN6 suppressor on the end of the gun, and we did chronograph this actual load earlier this afternoon at 2,600 feet per second. Now, this bullet is also designed to penetrate mild steel hard targets, but it's also then designed to rapidly expand and dump its energy in soft tissue. It should not make it all the way through a 16 inch gelatin block. We'll find that out later. So I'm gonna fire this first round through our simulated average American home. Let's go see what it did. Well, Tim, that's definitely why you wanna know what's on the other side of a, of a wall when you're shooting in, inside of a home. You Absolutely. Know? And you know, really, this can have a lot of applications for law enforcement, too. You know, there's guys that serve high-risk warrants all the time. Mm -hmm. There's people that are in those types of situations where they may have to, to fire that crucial shot uh, in an urban environment or inside of a building. Is that going to be Joe Blow American? Maybe not, but still an interesting point nonetheless. Uh, the bullet uh, carried right through our, our walls built to code, by the way, guys. You know, we've got insulation in here, 16-inch uh, on center studs. Uh, and then our layers of drywall here, it carried through and it began to destabilize just a little bit as it exited uh, the rear side of the wall. It kind of started to yaw a bit and it hit sideways going through the chair, carried through the chair, and then what did it do over here? Well, on the back side of the chair, we can clearly see the bullet came out of the back of the chair sideways. Nose down, the, the bolt was flying like this when it left the chair. Looks like it came across here perhaps the base of the bullet skipped right here off the table. They separated and almost, I mean, very quickly from this point to this point, the bullets dispersed into like a five inch group of, of projectiles. The base went off to the right. Looks like perhaps that, that aluminum tip hit sideways here and a couple of petals on the side here. And it, it came through the other side of the door, but it doesn't look like it came through with much velocity at all. Yeah, I don't think it would be enough velocity to hurt anybody on the other side of the door, but you still, you know, should consider that. Uh, let's move on to test a few others in this same exact test. As the video goes on, 
uh, we will go ahead and start adding some ballistic showing in the mix as well just to see what we have to work with because I'd be curious to see what happens when this round hits say a chunk of gel yeah. after it's gone through this. Totally agree. That should yeah, be a just great to test. see. Yep. You know? All right. Well, let's move on. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Moving along. This is one of my personal favorites. This is the 110 grain Lehigh Defense Control Chaos. Um, I've actually taken a couple of deer with this particular round and it does an excellent job. Uh, it creates some very nasty uh, permanent cavities that are like balloon size. They just blow up and dump a ton of energy. They have this just wicked kind of hydraulic uh, capability to them that just really makes that thing expand like mad and dump a lot of energy. Um, but if it hits a hard barrier, it'll penetrate uh, much like a, a ball round could. So we're going to try that just to see what it does. 110 grains and it's moving 2200 feet per second out of this nine inch barrel. Same gun, same distance. Let's go ahead and give her a try. Wow, I saw a bunch of stuff fly out from over there. Let's see uh, how well it punched through there. Well, Eric, I think you called it, brother. It punched right through. Looks like it came through the chair. No signs of a touch in the table. Right out the door, man. It, it looked like it stayed in one piece. Yeah, I think it's quite clear here, guys, that this round did exactly what it's designed to do. It'll punch through barriers pretty well. When it hits a soft, uh, you know, soft target, that's when it's really gonna start dumping that energy. Uh, we've done some testing with this round and it really is a wicked contender. Uh, it has a lot going for it. 2,200 feet per second is plenty of velocity. It only needs about 2,000 feet per second to function uh, like it's supposed to. So more than enough velocity out of even a nine inch barrel. And guys, you get that puppy moving out of a 16 inch barrel or a 12.5, you get a lot of velocity gains there. So uh, the other day when we were doing the hunting rounds with you, mm -hmm. we came to the conclusion that the 194 grain subsonic uh, maximum expansion round would be something that could probably be a contender for self-defense as well. So right. let's add this into the test and push it through the wall here. Sounds like a plan, man. Let's do let's it. Let's do that. So moving along, we're gonna try out Tim's favorite hunting load. This is the one that uh, in the hunting uh, round shakedown that we did over on Tim's channel, uh, this is the one he likes. It's the 194 maximum expansion. It's moving just under a thousand feet per second out of the nine inch barrel. We're gonna use the same gun. Go ahead and chunk it at this wall here, see what it does. Now this round right here is awesome. And I think that it could have implications for protection use, which is why we're including it in this test. And I want you to listen how quiet this bad boy is too. It's nice. Ready guys? There it is. Let's go have a peek. I'm kind of surprised Tim, I really am. Yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting, very interesting. Well, that bullet pushed through our wall that's built to code here, two layers of drywall insulation, all right? started to yaw and do a little bit of tumbling there. You know, the guys, that bullet's only moving a thousand feet per second out of this nine inch barrel. It's subsonic, so it ain't got a lot of velocity to really, you know, help with penetration. And then what it do in the wall there? Looks like it came through, maybe started to destabilize after it came through that drywall, hit this chair, definitely became unstable and keyhole it, hit that, that piece of wood perfectly sideways and went through. Probably not with a whole lot of velocity, but a whole bullet went through that door. Well, one thing I like about the uh, 194 is that it's subsonic, so you're going to get a little bit less noise, even if you're not using a suppressor, which is great. Two, it's not considered armor piercing in any kind of way because it's just a copper projectile. So you can shoot out of an SBR, pistol, rifle, and it doesn't matter. You're not going to face any kind of potential legalities right. you know, due to that. As U.S. law dictates, a handgun cannot fire a brass bullet legally because brass is considered armor piercing. So you have to keep that in mind when you're loading or, or choosing ammunition for your pistol if you're using an AR type pistol for self-defense. The 194 grain gets us around that and it's subsonic and does penetration and dumps a lot of energy. Seems like a well, all around you know, great cartridge. Right now, I'm, I'm thinking exactly along those lines. That, that 194 is a great little cartridge for a wide variety of different applications. Um, of course, you guys do need to check out Tim's video on uh, the hunting rounds that we did earlier. It's excellent and you'll really see this 194 shine in that video as well. Um, now that we have an idea what the barriers are going to do with these projectiles, let's go ahead and add some gel in the mix. Have a little fun. <laughs> yeah, that should be a lot of fun. Let's do it. Guys, this should be really interesting. We have one of the 78 grain uh, CQ rounds here that we're going to fire through the drywall, but on the other side, between the chair and the door, we have some Dr. Coat gel. In front of that, we have some beef ribs, and in front of that, we have four layers of denim. What this does, nobody knows, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. Now we did do some 
ballistics gel test earlier today, and we saw what these rounds could do. Now we're gonna see what they can do through barriers. Well guys, this particular uh, result is a little bit on the odd side. We could not, for the life of us, took us about five or six shots. We just couldn't connect with the gel block. Yeah, what's happening guys is the bullet is coming through the drywall. We shot all over the place. Bullets coming through the drywall. It's destabilizing, it's tumbling, or what's known as keyholing, coming through the chair. And you can see bits and pieces of that bullet hitting all over the place, but not once did we even connect with a fragment. So we're just gonna have to call it quits and uh, try something else. You know, based on what we saw the 194 do earlier, I'm inclined to say that it would do the same thing. We would have a difficult time yeah. getting the ME and the 194 only moving a thousand feet per second to do anything, which makes them excellent candidates for close quarters work. Because if you want the bullets to destabilize and become less lethal as they pass through hard barriers, but when they hit the soft barrier, Right. They got it going on. Because once that bullet starts to tumble, it starts to shed velocity quickly. Yes. So I think what we want to do, that block is taunting us. <laughs> let's toss a 110 control chaos at him and let's really show him what it's all about. All right. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. I can't just let that ballistic shell taunt me like that. So I'm going to slam this 110 control chaos through here. It's moving 2200 feet per second out of a nine inch barrel. We saw what it did to the barrier earlier. It just punched straight through. So we're gonna see if we can't hit this block on the first try. See what happens. All right, I saw some gel fly around. I think we might have stabbed it there. So let's go have a peek. Looks like you connected. I knew that 110 was gonna put the slap down on it. <laughs> well, the thing that's so impressive about that control chaos that I like in general, not just speaking about 300 Blackout, but really any of their control chaos ammo, is that even when you punch through drywall or plywood or anything that you know might be used to build a house or, or a home or something like that, it doesn't choke up that hollow point like it will you know, other types of defensive like handgun ammunition or anything like that. I mean, we saw that that round punched through all of this stuff, straight line penetration, just like our early test, and it got us a real nasty permanent cavity. Even though we hit a little bit high, we favored high on the block, but we still just had an enormous wound yeah, cavity. Yeah, that there. is a ginormous wound cavity. Yep. And that's, you know, a good five inches in. We know considering, you know, how, how well that round punched right through, let's go ahead and set this back up and mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if I can get a little closer to the center so that our slow-mo shot can just really show that basketball effect going on. All right, we'll turn it around. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're gonna get another clean shot on that block with the 110. I just can't let it taunt me like that. I want to see that thing blow up like a balloon or something. All right, same round. We're just going to try it again. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> something looked pretty cool there. You know, I've got this whole four by eight sheet here. And when I can see things coming all around from around it, yeah, let's go look. <laughs> it's like no matter what we do, we're not going to hit it dead center because it's just you really don't know what you're aiming at. Yeah. But that was very impressive. Extremely impressive. And you see that how that bullet actually connected with the rib, it looks like. And it hooked down, blew that block apart. We even have rib meat all the way up here on the door. Yeah. Boom. That was pretty dang awesome. You know, yeah. I, at this point in the video, I, I'm really inclined to think that that 110 is, is kind of a one trick pony for defense use if you're not worried about over penetration. Uh, that's the one concern that some people may have. That 110 is just going to kind of do what it wants to. Um, I really want to see what the 78 is going to do with maybe some ribs and, and blue jean material. So let's move all this out of the way and get that shot since we couldn't connect earlier. Yeah. And uh, maybe do the same thing with the maximum expanding just to see what we have to work with. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. All right. Here's my chance to get revenge. I'm taking the 78 grain CQ round. I'm going to hit some ballistics gel from Dr. Coat, which has a layer of beef ribs in front of it and then four layers of denim in front of that. Let's see what it does. Wow, let's take a look at that. Well, that was devastating, wasn't it? Yeah, that thing dumped a lot of energy. It, it did. So we got four layers of denim. It grazed, knocked a little bit off the, the rib there. Now this is beef rib, okay? So it's much thicker. It's a good size piece of bone. Yeah, that's a good size piece of bone. All right, and then we got some nice penetration and an, an awesome uh, permanent and temporary cavity. I mean, the cavitation is just extreme there. We have pieces of bullet everywhere, pretty much taking up the entire block, right? Yep. Looks like it came in 
about halfway through, so eight, nine inches, maybe 10 inches of penetration with the smallest fragment. Now, I don't think I'd use this for hunting, but if you're, if you're concerned about over penetration, holy cow, you can't beat a bullet like this. It's just gonna dump its energy and be done. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, um, you know, Considering what we saw earlier with the 78s and the, uh, the barriers and trying to defeat barriers and the way those bullets are just breaking up and traveling through all of those mediums, uh, I think it's very safe to say that the 78 would be an excellent candidate for defense. Um, that's, that's awesome. So I'll tell you what, let's gear back up and do the same exact test with the 194. I'm really curious to see what it's yeah, going to do. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Let's do it. Now I'm going to take my favorite hunting load, the 194 ME, which is subsonic, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to shoot uh, ordnance gel from Dr. Coat, and it's got some beef ribs in front of it. In front of that, four layers of denim. All right, let's see what it did. You know, I, I would say <laughs> that I can't believe that, but... I, that's, that's I do awesome. believe it. Yeah, yeah, this this just solidifies my view that this is an outstanding hunting cartridge. That sucker went through the denim, and I can see from the backside just walking up, it nice center clean. punched a yep. beef rib, which is, you know, as big as a human forearm bone. And then it still went on to give us 12, maybe 13 inches of penetration, nice expansion. And it nice carried bone and sinew and gene material into the wound. So, I mean, it's it just kept on running. I mean, look at that, there's gene material almost all the way in that wound there. Yep. That's an amazing round, guys. It really is. I mean, the 194 ME, you know, I can see why it's a good hunting round, but it's also, as we can see here, an excellent defensive round. It's gonna stop in the assailant, which is good. You're not gonna overpenetrate. Um, tell you what, we're gonna play with the control chaos. Uh, let's set up our soda baffle. Have you seen that yet? <laughs> I have, let's go play with that. All that right, sounds fun. Let's do it. Eric has set up this baffle system, which holds 10 two liter bottles of soda. I'm going to take a 110 grain controlled chaos round and I'm going to fire it into these bottles. Now, you guys watching, take a guess at how many bottles you think I'm actually going to penetrate here. I'm guessing three and the round may stop in the fourth. What do you guys think? Let's find out. Holy cow. <laughs> That's a heck of a lot of power. Jeez, I did not expect that. Well, Eric, I was off by one bottle. I thought it would maybe stop in the fourth. It stopped in the fifth. Easily cleared four bottles. Two, and that three, was violent. Four. It picked that whole rack of soda up and threw it. it you know, I, I'm very surprised. I've been surprised today. Look at that, there's, there's the base. base. Called it in the fifth bottle. One interesting thing is that the hole pretty much penetrates through both sides of the bo or bottle. And I think what happened was one of the pedals- Hit the bottle behind it and bounced back, or maybe one of the pedals. That, or one of the pedals might have made it through and then bounced out. Um, but that's a very interesting <laughs> result. Look at that. That's incredible. All right, well, I'll a tell you what. A lot of power. One more thing, and we're gonna tie things up today. I think it's uh, quite clear where we stand on these rounds. Yeah. Let's do it. Green. All right, guys, so I have set up a little test for Eric. What I've done is loaded all three rounds into a magazine, one of each of the three that we tested this afternoon, and the fourth round is a duplicate. We have four watermelons downrange. I'm gonna shoot each of the four watermelons, and Eric is gonna guess which round hit which watermelon. All right, so let's go. Eric, you ready? Ready. <laughs> so what do you think? All right, this is what I think. Control chaos. Um, maximum expansion, that suppressed one, second one was suppressed, right? Another control chaos followed up by the 78 grain. You almost had it. Really? Had the 110, 194, and the 78 twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> you almost well, had it. Well, that Very good. second one before the last sounded a little louder. That's yeah. why I thought it was the, the 110. And it also seemed like it, like it, that watermelon, the, the third one kind of came apart a little more than that last one did. Yep, it did. It did. So okay. that kind of threw you. I can see how it could throw you off. Excellent. But very good, man. You almost nailed it. Well, let's, uh, let's tie this up. I think, I think it's quite clear. We, we have an idea of what's going on. Yeah, here. absolutely. Let's do it. Guys, I want to thank you for watching today's video. We uh, had a ton of fun making it. I'm hoping you can tell here. And I want to thank Tim for taking time out of his busy schedule to come down here to Georgia to come film with us. Thank you for having me, man. For sure, man. And also on Tim's channel, Military Arms Channel, there is kind of a sister video to this one or brother video, however you want to look at it. Sibling. We have a sibling video to this <laughs> video that covers the hunting aspects of Lehigh Defense's ammo. 
Today we were talking more about defensive stuff and dealing with uh, you know things going on inside your house. I think that we kind of laid things out in a way that's easy for people to understand, I hope. Uh, out of today's rounds, which one impressed you the most? You know what, I've seen a lot of Im impressive results with all three of the rounds we tested. It really depends on what you want to accomplish with the load. Sure. We've seen rounds that stop, dumped all their energy, uh, you know, disrupted very quickly once they go through a barrier, so there's very little chance for them carrying through outside of the home. We saw rounds that had good penetration, also had good ballistics performance. You know, it kind of boils down to what you personally feel that you need. The three rounds represent a spectrum of offerings. I think, it, you know, pick what, what works for you. I agree. I agree. For my purposes, I think the 110 grain uh, control chaos is definitely on top of my list uh, for just general purpose uh, tomfoolery and things. Uh, for hunting, you guys should check out Tim's video and you'll learn a little bit about what he thinks is a good pig round. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but check it out. You'll like it. It's an excellent video. Guys, we appreciate you watching today again. We'll catch you next time. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys.